Hello. Welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We're glad that you have tuned in to join us for our online worship. You won't see me uh, except at the very end of the service for our communion uh, liturgy. You'll see me on video, but for right now, you'll just hear my voice because I am at home recovering from COVID, and I'll be doing most of my portions uh, uh, by phone, and I hope that uh, uh, the service uh, is a blessing to you, and I appreciate the Westermeyer family and all of their hard work in uh, putting everything together for our video. And uh, wherever you are, we are glad that you have tuned in to worship with us. As I said, our service includes the Sacrament of Communion, and we invite you to join us at the Lord's Table. Uh, and we invite you to gather any elements that you have at home for communion, any bread or crackers, any wine or juice will be just fine. The words of consecration in our communion liturgy will be for the elements that you have at home as, uh, as well as uh, uh, those that you'll see shared in the chapel. This is Reformation Sunday, Reformation and Reconciliation Sunday, and we remember the Protestant Reformation, and uh, we remember the work of the Protestant Reformers, which uh, that is part of our heritage at St. Peter and St. Paul UCC. And we also pray for Christian unity, and we pray that God will uh, be with us as we reach uh, out to all of our sisters and brothers in Christ, whatever denomination, and work together for the healing of the body of Christ. So now let us prepare our hearts and our spirits for the worship of God. Please join in our call to worship. Come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Let us welcome and worship Jesus in this sacred place. Come bearing all of your gifts, behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with zealous authenticity. Come with all of your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole selves. Our opening hymn is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Striving would be losing. 
Please join me in our invocation. Welcome, welcome us, loving Jesus, as we now welcome you into our hearts, minds, and worship. Let us transform and be transformed by each other so that we might perceive your presence among us ever more clearly. Amen. God intends for our lives to be filled with meaning and hope. As we make our confessions to God, May we be open to the good things that God is extending to us. Please join me in a prayer of confession. Lord of mercy, forgive us when we make excuses for our lack of faith. We let our selfishness and apathy get in the way of illumination and peace. We find ways to duck out of our opportunities for service and witness, claiming that we are too small or too ill-equipped to be effective witnesses to Jesus Christ. How foolish we can be. All of our lives, God has been present with us whether or not we knew it. God's love is always surrounding us, yet we have not taken the time to recognize it. We whine and complain about the misfortunes that have befallen us, and we wonder where God is. We want immediate release from our struggles, and when release comes, we again move off into our own realms of self-centeredness. Help us, O oh Lord, stop us from being so faithless. Open our hearts with your forgiving spirits, so that we, having been healed and forgiven, may actually be effective witnesses to your love and compassion. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You have always been loved by God. Know that you were healed and forgiven, and that God has placed a special blessing in your life. Rejoice. God is with you. Serve God in all that you say, think, and do. We come now to our time of pastoral prayer, and I invite you to bring all of your concerns and your joys to God as we pray together. Uh, we continue to remember all of the, the needs of our world and our local community as well. Let us pray for peace in our world 
Let us pray for the health of those who are sick, and let us pray that God will be near those who are struggling through the challenges and the crises of life. Let us turn to God now in a spirit of prayer. O God of trees and pathways, you stand ready for us to gaze in your direction. As Jesus walked down the Jericho path, observing Zacchaeus, help us to remember that you are continually present to us, watching and guiding our steps. When we falter, you pick us up, dust us off, and place us back on the path. When we run in directions that are harmful, you are ready to rescue and redeem us. When we shout our disbelief, you offer to us your love and are ready to receive us. Today, as we have gathered for worship, remembering all those who have gone before us, who have paved the way for our faith, help us to be aware that we stand in the same long line of witnesses to your love. Give us courage and strength to serve you in all that we do. Remind us again that you are not looking for us to be perfect before we come to you, for you will take our rough edges and make them smooth. You will find the sparkling gem in the rough stone. You will help us learn to serve and witness to your love. Let us place our trust and our lives in your loving care. And now in these moments of silence, I invite you to pray the personal prayers of your hearts. All of our prayers spoken and unspoken we offer to you, O God, and in the name of Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray with the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading is our epistle reading from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians in chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel reading is from Luke's gospel, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jericho when it was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He's going to be the guest of one who is a sinner. 
Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. May God bless the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Luke provides us with this wonderful, beautiful, familiar story of a man named Zacchaeus. Luke tells us three things at the outset of the story. First, Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. That meant that Zacchaeus worked for the Roman government. That would have made him hated in his community because being a tax collector in ancient Israel was not a respectable civil service job as it is today. He was a job, it was a, his was a job in which he overcharged his fellow Israelites, their tax liabilities. He would pay Rome what was due, and then he would keep the difference. Zacchaeus benefited from the powerlessness of his neighbors and was able to enrich himself because of it. Thus, the second thing we learn about Zacchaeus is that he was rich. Day after day, year after year, Zacchaeus had accumulated a lot of personal wealth at the expense of his neighbors. That would have created a lot of resentment on the part of his fellow Israelites. If he had earned his wealth in a legitimate way, there would not have been a problem. But his wealth grew from his exploitation of others. We can imagine that the life of Zacchaeus was one of extreme comfort and luxury, but it was probably a lonely life. He had alienated from his life those with whom he should have been in community. And the third thing we learn about Zacchaeus is that he was short in stature. That's the phrase that Luke uses, short in stature. We do not know exactly what that means, but we can picture a man who might have been picked on because of his size. We were saddened this week to learn of the tragic death of a very funny and talented actor, Leslie Jordan. Leslie Jordan appeared in many television programs and movies over the last several decades. During the COVID shutdown, his Instagram posts went viral and his wonderful sense of humor provided many people with the encouragement they needed to get through those difficult days. Leslie Jordan was known for his animated, larger-than-life personality, his rich Southern accent, he was a native of Tennessee, and his ability to make people laugh. He was also known for being shorter in stature, like Zacchaeus. Over the last several days, I've watched a number of video clips and interviews with Leslie Jordan, and in one, he stated that he learned early in life that his gift of being funny helped keep bullies at bay, bullies who would pick on him because he appeared to be different or because of his size. Leslie Jordan, over time, learned to be who he was and to let his talent shine and his wonderful personality shine and we are all better off because of that. One day, Zacchaeus, who was probably picked on, who was probably looked at with suspicion by his neighbors, learned to let the real Zacchaeus out. He found salvation, we are told, when Jesus came to town. Zacchaeus, being a man of shorter stature, climbed a sycamore tree so that he could get a better look at Jesus. Zacchaeus heard about this man who healed and who helped people find God's love and who changed people's lives. And Zacchaeus wanted to see what Jesus was all about. Not only did Zacchaeus get a better look at Jesus, Jesus got a good look at Zacchaeus and called out to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' home and Zacchaeus was very happy and willing to welcome Jesus. That was the time Jesus came to visit. The time Jesus came to visit Zacchaeus. Suddenly the man short in stature who was overlooked or avoided by his neighbors or picked on was seen, seen by Jesus. And something happened. Something happened that day that changed Zacchaeus in his life. While the respectable people of the town grumbled and complained about Jesus going to be the guest of one who is a sinner, Zacchaeus declared to Jesus with excitement, with joy, and very likely with laughter, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus changed Zacchaeus' attitude, his perspective, his life. 
he was no longer focused on getting as much money as he could out of people. Now he was focused on how much he could give away. He wanted to make restitution, reparation, to those he had hurt, those he had defrauded, and he wanted to pay them back four times as much just to demonstrate that he was really serious. And he also promised to give half of his possessions to the poor. He didn't have to do that. He wasn't asked to do that, but he wanted to do that. Zacchaeus was a changed man. He was someone finally noticed, and that someone was Jesus. What happens to us when we really welcome Jesus into our homes, into our lives, into our hearts? Like Zacchaeus, Jesus does not see us according to the definitions of the world or of society or of our neighbors. Jesus sees us as God's beloved children, and he never gives up on us. Jesus never quits seeing the potential for us to love more, to give more, to be more, to be more full of life tomorrow than we are today. Zacchaeus was a changed man because Jesus saw him, and Jesus saw what could be in the life of Zacchaeus. You and I are being changed every day because Jesus has come to stay with us too. Jesus has entered our world, our lives, our hearts with a message of love and acceptance, of promise and hope. Perhaps you've seen the musical, the Broadway musical motion picture, My Fair Lady, based on George Bernard, Bernard Shaw's wonderful play, Pygmalion. King Duncan reminds us of the story, the story of a brilliant professor, Henry Higgins, who transforms a humble flower girl, Eliza Doolittle, into an elegant English lady. In the midst of her brilliant transformation, Eliza falls in love with Henry Higgins, but he treats her only with disdain. Towards the end of the play, she expresses her complaint to their mutual friend, Colonel Pickering. You see, she says, really and truly apart from the things anyone can pick up, the dressing and the proper way of speaking and so on, the difference between a lady and a flower girl is not in how she behaves, but how she is treated. I shall always be a flower girl to Professor Higgins because he always treats me as a flower girl and always will. But I know I can be a lady to you because you always treat me as a lady and always will. It is true and interesting and encouraging to notice how Jesus treated people, whether it was a woman with a bad reputation or the tax collector in the tree. He saw someone no one else could see, and that is the first thing we need to see, sisters and brothers. Jesus was more eager to see Zacchaeus than Z Zacchaeus was to see him. What in your life, what in our lives would we like to change? Sisters and brothers in Christ, today salvation has come to your house, to my house. May we have the courage and the faith to allow the love of Christ to change us and shape us into the people God is inviting us to be. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 585, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
When the crowds around Zacchaeus blocked his view of Jesus, he anticipated where Jesus would be and staked space in the sycamore tree to increase his ability to see. His foresight became a blessing as Jesus saw Zacchaeus and invited him down from the tree. Likewise, let us look ahead to where we can meet and welcome Jesus into our many ministries by generously sharing our various gifts today. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Thank you for choosing to receive these gifts that we now share with you, gracious God. Bless each offering, including our very selves, and let every single one be given in service to you. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord, and everyone is indeed welcome. And our communion is something that we share, whether you're in the chapel here at St. Peter and St. Paul or at home, the blessings that we offer extend to the elements uh, wherever, wherever we may be. So let us uh, come now to the table and receive God's blessing. I invite you to join me in saying together the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty the maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have gathered in the name of Jesus, our Savior and living Lord. We recall how Jesus made himself known to his friends in the breaking of bread, and how their hearts were set ablaze as they talked and communed with him. May our hearts rejoice and our tongues be filled with praise as we come to meet him here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. 
Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us come for all things are ready. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. And now I invite you to pray with me our prayer of thanksgiving. We have received from your hand, O God, bread from the earth to fortify our hearts and wine to gladden our spirits. May these signs of Christ's presence fill our lives with such gratitude that we are impelled to spread the joy wherever we go. Our final hymn is hymn number 632, Lead On, O King Eternal. Oh, 
Thank you for worshiping with us today. May God be with you as you prepare for a new week, and we look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Sisters and brothers, Almighty God, bless and keep us. Merciful God, make your face to shine upon us. The blessed and holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.